Hi, my name is Sangwan. I'm an intensivist and I'm here to discuss with you a new way of doing percutaneous tracheostomy using a dedicated device. This device is a most simple device. The best way to look at it, it is made up of two lumens and it is made up of two balloons. The lumen that is colored in blue and which is anterior and shorter is the viewing tube. The viewing tube basically houses a pediatric bronchoscope and is the one that we use for visualization. The tube on the back obviously attaches to the ventilator and it is called the ventilation tube and therefore it is longer and protrudes farther. Now there are very good things about this device but I would like the viewer, viewers to imagine that the anterior blue colored viewing tube is actually 3.5 millimeter in inner diameter because that's the tube that will house a pediatric bronchoscope. The ventilation tube which you have guessed correctly looks like very much like an endotracheal tube because that's what it is. I want you to imagine that the diameter in this case is a regular adult endotracheal tube somewhere between 7.5 to 8.5 millimeter. The proximal balloon is a big balloon, maybe about 60 cc's in size and its main job is to make sure that this device, once you have achieved the proper bronchoscopic view, always remains in place and the operator can put down his bronchoscope knowing that he'll always have a fantastic view of the anterior tracheal wall. The balloon can also help ventilate because it is just above the glottic opening. If in the times when the balloon is being deflated because you want to adjust the length of your ventilator tube or the patient's endotracheal tube for that matter, the ventilation will still be maintained because very little air is going to escape around this big tube into the esophagus. Having said that, let's come to the most important part of this tube. The, the two tubes are mobile relative to each other. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that the length of the ventilation tube can be adjusted from 2 centimeters to about 14 centimeters. That means that when I am in the beginning stages of my procedure, the ventilator tube can extend right up to the carina. Okay. Why is that important? Because that will create a bigger space between the bronchoscope, which, which is housed just below the glottic opening and the balloon to be able to perform the tracheostomy without distending the trachea too much. Once I have put in the needle, placed the guide wire, completed my dilatation and I am just about to place the tracheostomy tube, this tube would need to be pulled back and by making the shorter length just 2 centimeters it will be possible to remove this ventilator tube and push in your uh, tracheostomy tube without any problems. Now, you can ask, why don't I just pull the whole thing out? I didn't want to do that because I wanted to maintain 100% bronchoscopic visualization throughout the procedure. And by making these two mobile relative to each other, it means that this viewing tube does not have to move even one centimeter and you always get an awesome view of the operating field which is the anterior tracheal wall from below okay since both the tubes are mobile relative to each other that means that it is possible to pull them apart and what does that mean that means that if your patient already has 
and eat it you like most of our patients will. You don't have to do any airway exchange. The patient's own ET tube will be the ventilation tube and the viewing apparatus which has by itself a double lumen, the smaller lumen being 3.5 mm and the bigger lumen being 9 mm so that it can accept first of all the balloon and second adult ET tube sizes from 7.5 to 8.5 millimeter, which is where most of the tubes lie. The whole tracheostomy procedure is a very anxiety producing procedure because you are always in a position to have a prolonged uh, procedure to lose the airway and most of these patients are very sick. What I have tried to do is make this whole anxiety producing procedure just have a one or two episodes of anxiety producing steps each step just lasting maybe a few seconds and that's why it's called easy tracheostomy. So the first step in a patient who already has his own ET tube is to quickly deflate the patient's cuff okay and feed the cuff right here through the ventilation tube and quickly reinflate it all right now that wasn't too bad that is anxiety producing step number one since i'm not a biomedical engineer my prototype does not have a nine millimeter diameter opening for the patient's ET tube or for a proper size ventilator tube. So I will be demonstrating the rest of the procedure with a smaller size 5 pediatric tube. The second anxiety producing step once you have passed the balloon would be to disconnect the patient from the ventilator and quickly put on your viewing apparatus onto the patient's endotracheal tube as soon as it comes out from the other side quickly put the ventilator back once you have achieved this step there is no more anxiety associated with this procedure take your time to put a bronchoscope through the viewing tube and as soon as it reaches the end place the bronchoscope down and from now you do not need any separate operator for the bronchoscope because you will be just adjusting the viewing apparatus itself to reach where you want to reach. As soon as we look through the bronchoscope, we see that we are already at the glottic opening and all you have to do is to push your viewing tube just behind the glottic opening and inflate the balloon so that it stays there. Now you can see how easy it is to move the ventilation tube back and forth you can push the tube in so that you have space to do your tracheostomy and you can pull it back when you want to insert the tracheal tube. The anterior wall of the trachea is always visible and that also in a very good view. The rest of the tracheostomy procedure is done exactly like it is currently done except that the ventilation tube is in place right till the end and is only withdrawn when the final insertion of the tracheostomy tube is done.